Adam and Jamie are testing the truth of that delightful idiom, you can't polish a you-know-what. Oh, Adding to the unpleasantness, Jamie's use of furniture polish provoked a scat spat. I mean, it's ridiculous. I just don't believe it. Adam's enlisted Jason Arnold to explain the Japanese art of dorodango, shaping shiny balls from common dirt, using only your hands, tap water, and wow. patience. This was made out of just some uh, soil found in my dad's backyard. Then I wanted something nicer, so I went and got a, just a nice dirt mix that didn't have a bunch of junk in it. So. Wow, these are great. Can you teach me how to do this? Absolutely, yes. I, I love to teach people how to do this. Let's do it. All right. The boys dish the dirt side by side. It's a proof of concept cooking lesson that hopefully works just as well with manure. They need a good balance of dirt and water to shape a sphere the size of a pool ball. And remember, this is nothing more than a ball of mud. And the frequent trips to the fridge to speed up the condensation. So 25 minutes, we pull them out. Sounds great. It all takes time, but it could be worse. If you're doing this uh, the old fashioned way with no refrigerator outside, it'll take more like a week or, or longer as, it, wow. as you leave it outside. Now, Adam has a surprise for Jason. So, Jason, I know I haven't told you what the whole purpose of this is. I'm wondering how well this process would translate to poop, to polishing poop. Uh, it could be done, I think. That's uh, all I needed to know. <laughs> Check it out. Time to mend some fences with a method wow. we hope they both agree on. Look at that. That is dirt, water, and this little elbow grease. Does it bounce? <laughs> no, I think it's actually pretty darn delicate, but I think this is our process. Adam adopts the ostrich droppings. <laughs> and Jamie decides on the lion leftovers. I'm holding on to a ball of wet dung, and I have a hard time imagining that it's going to be shiny when I'm all done. At the same time, I'm so jazzed from my shiny mud ball that I'm optimistic that this is going to work. You know, the casual viewer might look at this and say, uh, pardon the pun, what a load of crap. Who needs to know this? This is disgusting. But I'm actually really fascinated by this. Even if it is a disgusting material, it's totally unlikely and yet by really thinking carefully about it and, and by like polishing and working it we've actually got a lovely shine on this. Because the whole point of this exercise is to polish a poop the question remains how do we know when we get there what is shiny what is polished well we've got a gloss meter here which measures shininess in gloss units and we know that anything above a gloss unit measurement of 70 is considered high gloss or polished, and I submit that that is our target. They've cramped their fingers, lost time with loved ones, and infused M5 with a stink that might just last forever. But if they can bust this myth, well, it's almost worth it. 106, ha <laughs> ha. Remember, anything above a gloss units of 70 is high gloss, and I got 106. So I succeeded in polishing a poop. Let's go get Jamie's. Jamie, you'll recall, chose the lion dung. So in this bizarre quest for the best and brightest, it's carnivore versus herbivore. Nicely done, 183 gloss units. So you should know anything above 70 gloss units is considered high gloss and you knocked it out of the park. <laughs> so I guess I succeeded. This, yeah. is, uh, this is nothing but poop. Yeah. And like, what was it? Three or four days of constant polishing in my off time? <laughs> Who knew? Well, 106 gloss units for ostrich. 183 for a lion. They're shiny. They are. I'd say we've handily busted this myth. You can, in fact, polish a poop. Yes, you can. It's busted.